Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're in this computer. That's right, we're gonna code. We're gonna build something interesting and that is a web crawler. We're gonna code this web crawler with Python and Scrappy framework. This is gonna be an interesting video. If you don't know what a web crawler is, it's basically a bot, a script that you run on other websites and you code it in a way that it goes and collects the data for you from that website. And uh, when this crawler is running on a website, it gathers the data much faster and much easier Easier than doing it manually of course today we're gonna go through that and for those of you that don't know this channel I'm Sam Bahari from the dev way in this channel we do all interesting stuff from coding from talking about productivity tips uh, checking out new tech learning some stuff together all that interesting stuff so make sure to subscribe and if you like this video make sure to like the video we will start this episode just now but before that, I would like to share a disclaimer with you. The thing that we are trying to build here is a web crawler. And if you're doing this web crawler thing on another website, you need to make sure that the content is not copyrighted, it's public, and you are allowed to get that data from the website. Also, you need to respect the robots.txt file on the website that basically shows the crawlers and the bots on the web, what they can access and what they can't. And if you don't know what that is, stick with the video a little bit we're gonna go through all of that just in a bit and without further ado let's start with this video so uh, the website that we are gonna crawl today is hemnet.se and hemnet.se is a website that basically people can go and advertise their houses and if you're interested in buying a house you go on this website you submit your interest you see the prices and everything about the houses it's the most famous housing advertisement platform in the whole Sweden and right uh, now we're gonna create a crawler that goes and fetches the advertisements for these houses from this website before writing a crawler what I would suggest is check the website and check the structure for a little bit and try to come up with ideas and try to find out how you can do the crawler on that website and that is what we are going to do but before that we need to check the robots.txt file as I mentioned at the starting of the video it's mostly located at the home directory of the website so right now I can just write robots.txt and we go to this file this file basically represents what all the user agents like the bots on the web the users all that can see which directories they can see and which they can and basically it doesn't mean that you can't open those directory it's just a rule that the crawlers can agree on or they can't for example the bots from Google uh, when they want to crawl the websites and index them they always check for this file and make sure that they are allowed to check that directory before they index that in the Google and also you can see the sitemap over here and also you can analyze this file with a lot of external websites you can just write robots.txt analyzer and you will get a lot of tools so after we check this robot.txt file we need to analyze this website and i'm going to run the project i'm going to make all the files folders and installations ready then we come here and analyze how we are going to write this crawler on this website so i will go to my terminal before anything else uh, there are some stuff that we need to install of course and what I would like to do on this project and most of my Python projects is that I don't like to install all the packages on globally on the whole system it will cause conflicts the upgrades might have issues in the future and it's not really a good practice so I install something called vir virtual EMV and for those of you who don't know it's basically a virtual environment for Python that you can install all your project packages and all your project files inside that environment and you can easily move that environment from computer to another computer and also the packages that you install they are locally located in that virtual EMV so you don't have to install it globally in the system but only inside the project folder first we're going to verify that we have the tools that we need we need Python 3 and right now I'm using Python 3.7.7 .7. we can verify that this is installed here here. if you don't have it installed you can google it 
how to install Python 3 is easy. Millions of tutorials will pop up uh, based on your operating system. You will get the guide that you need. But if you are using a Mac like I do, you can easily write brew install Python 3 or Python and then you can install it. We also need to verify that we have a virtual EMV installed in our system. So I'm going to write virtual EMV dash dash version over here and as you can see we have the version 20.0.16 right now and when I'm recording this tutorial if you don't know how to install that again you can google it or just if you're using Mac type brew install uh, virtual EMV and you will be able to install that easily so now that we have everything installed uh, we need to create our project and then create a virtual EMV inside that project so we can install Scrappy, which is our framework to build this crawler with. So I'm just going to create a directory over here. Uh, I'm not going to call that Hemnet. I'm going to call that, let's say, housing. And we have the folder or the directory over here. We can CD to that and it's an empty one. Uh, with virtual EMV, if you want to create an empty project, you simply type virtual EMV. And since we're in this directory, we don't have to specify it with the path. I'm going to type dot and I'm going to hit enter. It will choose the current directory as a directory that wants to create virtual EMV. And as you can see, it says a virtual EMV is created. We should be able to see that. Uh, as you can see, we have some files now. We have a CFG file, which is config. We have a lib and a bin file. If we switch to the bin file, we can verify that there are some stuff installed for us beforehand, like the Python 3.7, pip package manager, which we're gonna use a little bit later to install Scrappy itself and some other uh, activation scripts and all that stuff that is necessary for virtual EMV. And this directory basically is where our packages after we install them they will be located in here and if we install Scrappy we should be able to see Scrappy over here and not in the whole system which is a really good thing in terms of upgrading and the stuff that I talked about. So we also have the lib over here and the library that we have right now is only Python and that is fine. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch into this virtual EMV because right now we're outside that, we just created that and to switch inside that, to be able to execute commands inside that uh, virtual EMV, we simply say source bin activate. Uh, and the activate file is in the source directory that we just looked at. We're just gonna run this activate. So we go inside there. As you can see in my terminal with this arrow, it says we're inside housing right now. And it means we're inside the virtual EMV. But if you haven't configured anything special for your terminal, whether you're using Linux, Windows or Mac, this won't be visible for you. And basically not, you feel like nothing has happened. And that's a really common thing that can happen. And if you like to make your terminal just like mine and show this, I can show you guys, let me know in the comment section, I can make you another video and show you how I made my terminal look like this and how I installed this plugin. I'm using oh my Z shell and it's really easy to configure that. You guys can do that if you like to as well. And right now we're inside this virtual EMV, but if you don't see that, you can easily um, verify that you are there by writing deactivate over here. And if you hit deactivate and nothing, no, no errors is here, that means you were inside the virtual EMV, but you're out now. Because if I run it again, it will say this command not found because right now we're not inside the virtual EMV. And this is how you can verify if you're in or not, just once is enough but mostly you will be in the file and there is no need for that. So and without further discussion about virtual EMV, we go in again and we install Scrappy. Pip3 install Scrappy. Pip3 is a command that will install Python packages and install Scrappy is obvious. Uh, and we hit that. The Scrappy is now being installed inside our virtual EMV and we will verify that in a second. So the job is done. This is just a warning. Uh, it's not a serious issue. If we upgrade our package manager, apparently this will go away. 
but uh, this will work anyway so we're not going to do that right now uh, we go to the bin directory once again to verify that scrappy is here and as you guys can see scrappy is right here that means the scrappy is installed as we can see it's successfully installed in here so we have access to the scrappy packages right now in our project so uh, after doing this we need to create our project right now the environment is set we have almost everything that we need but we need to start a crawler project so we can go and code inside that for that scraper or crawler so what i'm going to do right now is I'm gonna say scrappy start project and I'm gonna call this hemnet because it's the project that we're writing and if you run this command scrappy will install hemnet project in your virtual EMV in here and if you do a ls or ll you can see that hemnet is actually installed over here and we can go inside the directory of hemnet and we can see this uh, scrappy files and empty project folders uh, but right now we're going to open this in a text editor or an ide so we can see the files easily so i'm going to switch to sublime i already opened the youtube directory that i created the project in so my files are here and this is the hemnet that is the scrappy project that we have and if i go to hemnet again we can see some files that are scrappy files and we're going to work with them as we're coding our crawler the spider directory is where your spiders or crawlers are located and uh, you're going to create your project files over here and this is a cache file we're not going to do much with that anyways and we also have a settings file in here that we can change the default setting for Scrappy uh, for our spiders. Uh, this might come handy in the future, but I don't think we're going to use that in this project. And also we have other files like middleware, pipelines, and items over here that uh, as we go, we might use that in the future. But I'm going to keep this tutorial simple and easy to understand so I'm not going to use those but if you're crawling a website that needs a middleware or a pipeline you can easily go to the scrappy uh, to, uh, documentation or tutorial and you can see how you can work with them so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna create my Python file uh, that is gonna be my crawler over here and I'm gonna call it hemnet.py I'm gonna save it inside spiders as I said and this will be my empty file for creating this uh, crawler in and uh, right now we need to call some methods and classes that uh, basically goes to the website brings the content and then we can use the selectors to crawl that data but before we start coding since our project is ready now we are going to go to the website and do some analyze on that. See how we're going to do this. Just think about it a little bit. So we go to the website again. This is the Hemnet website and we're in the main page. Uh, as you can see, you can search an address over here and choose the type of house that you're interested in. And you will see the advertisements for that area or for that address. So right now I'm going to write a random place. I'm going to choose leg and head which means apartment and I'm gonna click search and we should be able to see the ads for this area over here and as you can see we have 38 hits and these are all advertisers so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through each of these advertisements and we need to crawl the data that we need from them and for that we're just gonna click on one of them and see how they work and we can see that the advertisements have a detailed page that the price the address the area and all this description and attributes of that house and advertisement is there and this page is actually what we're interested to grab the data from and this is the page that all these advertisements are located so what we're going to do is we need to extract the links to this detailed page for each of these advertisements and then we are going to grab whatever we need from this detailed page 
and once we're done we save that into a file or a database and uh, whatever we like and we move on to the next one and then our crawler keeps doing that until this page is already crawled and then it goes to the next page right now this address has only one page so we are only going to focus on this page but then i'm going to show you how we can make this uh, script follow the links in the website and basically paginates to another pages of advertisements until every hit is done so let's start with that let's try to grab the links to these detailed pages from these uh, advertisements and then we're gonna code how we can grab that. Uh, to make this easy, I will actually go to the Scrappy documentation. Yeah, I'm gonna write scrappy.org and I'm gonna go to the documentation. We're just gonna use some of the things that are here for us and I'm gonna explain how each of them works. Uh, we already did this, we created the project and this is the first spider or the crawler. And Scrappy actually suggests us to do something like this. I'm gonna copy this over there and I'm gonna explain how it works. But we're also gonna do some changes uh, because I don't really like this style. I think it might be confusing for the beginners especially. So we can do some changes in the script, but we're just gonna copy that in our file that we just created. And in this file, as you can see, it's importing Scrappy and creates a class called Codes Spider because the project here is called Codes. Uh, our project is called Hemnet. So we're just gonna say Hemnet Spider in a class name. And the name also represents the name of the spider or the crawler that we wanna run. And I'm gonna call this Hemnet as well. And then we have two methods over here. One is parse and one is start requests. So what happens over here is that our crawler, when it's when we're running it, it grabs all these URLs in this array that we gave to that, and it starts to iterate through each of these URLs, and for each of them, it runs the scrappy request with the callback of parse, and this is our parse method. And basically what it does is it opens this page, sends the response to this parse method, and then we can grab the data that we need from this parse method. But uh, I have a better solution for this uh, just to not make it so complicated. And there is a property that we can also use over here called start URLs. And sorry, start, that's right. And instead of overriding this method and writing it we can just say start URLs and we can just give it our URLs over here and basically this will ha uh, be happening in the background without the need of writing it down so I'm gonna get rid of this method and I'm gonna have our URL over here and also I'm gonna make this in one line since we only have one link right now to crawl. I'm gonna delete one of these. And also I'm gonna replace this with our link that we are gonna use here. Uh, this is our link. I'm gonna copy it and put it in the start URL. So we start with this page to do our crawling part. And uh, what we have in the parse is that it's splitting and it's uh, checking some codes, HTML pages. This is just for the like example tutorial. We're not gonna use any of these. We're gonna go through all of them together. So I'm gonna do this and delete what we have. And instead of that, I'm gonna verify that this parse method is actually showing the content of this page that we just gave it to it. So I'm gonna write print response, then I'm gonna run the crawler. One thing that we need to keep in mind is that this response is an object of this page that is open. It's not the actual content of the page, but the content of the page is inside this response. So if we wanna see the content, we need to write re response.txt. And this will give us the actual HTML and CSS codes of this page in this variable and it's going to print it out in our terminal. And if we don't write this, it basically shows us the object of this response with the 200 success message that it means it's already open. 
but we're not able to see the data. So I'm just gonna run this and see if we get this source of this page. Uh, I'm gonna clear the terminal and I'm gonna write scrappy crawl hemnet. And what this command does is it says to scrappy crawl and now we specify the hemnet which is this name that we specified over here and scrappy will recognize this spider or crawler and will run it. And if we hit enter, the spider starts to work and as you can see it's lightning fast and it's already finished. And as we can see here, we can verify that we have the content of the page in the format of HTML, CSS, JS, anything inside the source page over here. This is actually where our data is located. So that's a good first step. What we need to do right now is to extract these links that we already talked about that leads to the detailed page that we can actually see the data. This is our next step and for that we're going to use the tool in our Chrome or Firefox that we all love, it's inspect. If you're a web developer you're absolutely familiar with this. Uh, this is a a good debugging tool for especially front-end developers they can see the elements of the page and this tool comes super handy when we're writing crawlers because we need to understand the structure of the page we need to understand how everything's written in HTML and CSS and all that then we can use techniques and selectors from our crawler and our scrappy framework to extract them so as we can see over here, if we just hit this and select this ad, we're going to see that it has a link. And no surprise, it leads us into a link. It's a normal ahref link. And what we're going to do is we want to extract all these links for all these advertisements. And then we're going to open them and get the details that we want from them. And for doing that, we need to take a good look at uh, of our parent elements of this page and see how, just how they work. Uh, we can see that we have a URL with a class of normal results here. This is actually a really good news. That means we can easily tell to our selectors in our spider that go look for a URL with a class of normal results and then loop through each element of them, which in this case is going to be the LIs inside that and each of these ads are an li in this list and if we can loop through them we can easily extract the information that we need from them so we're going to do that but before that we need to also verify that this uh, normal results is not located anywhere else in this page otherwise it might be a little bit confusing and maybe we don't get the result that we need from our crawler and what we can do is we can easily copy this and search it through our this whole element. As we can see, we have 70 matches. But we need to understand that this class can be a prefix of another classes in this document and in this page. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's over and we cannot do anything. We just need to take a closer look because after all, we only look for a UL with a class of normal results, not any other element. And we can go through this, and as you can see, my theory was right, and in this case, this is a prefix of all these classes. If we specify that into our selector, we won't have any issues getting that and extracting that. So if we go through all this 70, we see the same thing, so we're not gonna do that and we're just going to go and write our selector to be able to extract our hrefs or our links. So we have a UL with a class of normal results. We go back to our script. We know that we have the response here, but it, we don't want to print that right now. What we want to do is we want to grab it with a selector and Scrappy has two types of selector. One is XPath and one is CSS. CSS most of the time is my favorite, but you guys can use any of that that you feel more comfortable with the syntax or depending in your case scenario, you might need to use them both. But right now I'm going to use the CSS selector. I'm going to type response.css 
This is how we call our CSS selector. And then we pass a string over here. And what we need to tell this uh, selector is that we need a UL, as we check there, with the class of normal results. I'm going to copy exactly this class so it's not confusing or we don't have typos. And this dot represents that this is a class. If it's an ID, we need to do a sharp sign like this. But right now this is a class and we don't need to specify that like that. And this selector right now is selecting hopefully our element that we want. Uh, we can put this inside our good old print function and see how it works. But as you remember, the same thing that we had for response, we have with the CSS after we select from response. This is still an object and we don't see the actual results. I'm going to show what we can see and then we can extract the actual result from this object. If we run this crawler again, with a scrappy crowd hemnet, we can see that here we have an object. The object is a selector object and it has some XPath references and some CSS references over here. It's a long object. And this doesn't help us that much. We can only see that the data starts with the UL with a class of normal result. So what we need to do is to extract this data. And for that, we can do two things. We can do dot extract or we can do dot get. There are some differences, uh, but right now I'm going to use dot get to actually see the strings of what we have there. So I'm going to run it again. Scrappy crawl hemnet. I'm going to run. And as we can see, we won. We have the UL closed over here, and it should be opened a little bit up top. And we see all these attributes and all these data from the source of the page that we can easily take a look at and extract the data that we need from them. So we can go back to the page. Remember, we needed the links for each of these advertisements, but right now we only have the parent UL of all of them. So we need to get these LIs, each of them inside that. And we also can see that not all these LIs are the ones that we need. Uh, some of them are ads in this website, like external ads. Some of them are like this. It says today, it says three days ago and these are not the data that we want to extract we only want the actual advertisements with actual links so we want to look at these classes again and see if we find something valuable something that we can use to extract this and as you can see this has an age which is definitely the age of the advertisement three days one day we don't want that and we can see a hit over here and if we go down there we can see that after this li this still again age and hit age and hit and this is an ad unit which is an external ad on this website like this one right here we don't want to extract anything from these because it's not valuable whatsoever so this is the interesting class right now that we have and it's kind of unique inside this UL among all these LIs. So definitely we want to take a look at that. And this is the class that we want to use. But before that, we need to loop through each of these LIs uh, and not only select it just like the way we are doing it right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a for loop in Python. I'm going to say for, let's say, add in i'm gonna copy this from here we're using some code and we have this data but after that we need the li's and how we specify to this css selector that we want the something inside this uh, element is with this small arrow sign uh, or the greater sign whatever that you want to call it it works and we just put this greater or arrow sign and 
after that we specify that we need li and right now if we execute this it's going to grab all the li's that we saw in the script but that's not the thing we want to extract the thing we want is the ones with the class of normal result hits so i'm going to copy this and i'm going to put it here remember this is a class this is also a class not an id in our html so I'm going to write dot again and I'm going to paste this in and if you're familiar with Python for a for loop we need this and Python is all about indentations so I'm going to indent one tab over here to get my print working and since we don't need this anymore we can do something with this add and verify that the data that it extracts is actually useful for us so I'm going to write add over here and we all remember that this is still an object not something that we can read so i'm gonna write get not text right now but get to get this selector data from this object i'm gonna go to my terminal again and i'm gonna run scrappy crawl hemnet i'm gonna stop that soon uh, okay it's already stopped okay, it's lightning fast definitely faster than your thumbs yes we can see that we have some stuff here which is good the stuff that we have is definitely the advertisements some specifications about these advertisements and also we have the image files from that ad that we can see the little thumbnails we had there if we go upper we can see the address but remember we're not trying to extract any data from this page the only thing we're interested in right now is to grab the link that leads us to the detailed page and spe speaking of which is here and as we can see this li with this classes that we just specified has an a in them and in that a we have the href or the link that we need so what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna say after the L li again we put the greater sign and in this part we're gonna say a the way we select the href is we put two colons right after each other and we specify attr as the attribute then we open and close parentheses because it's a method when the selector gets parsed in the background and we need to pass a string to this attr method so since we're inside a double quote right now I'm going to put two single quotes over here and in this single quote I'm going to type href because href is the attribute that we are trying to grab from the source of the page and that is this one. I'm just going to write this and see if we get the link or not and this stays the same and we run our crawler once again and boom magic we can see all these links from the page if we count them we can see that it's the whole page it's the whole 38 ads that we have and what we need to do next is we need to open each of these links and we need to navigate to the detailed page and that is when the fun part begins we need to extract the data in these detailed pages and our real job starts right after that so what I'm gonna do right now for each of these links that we just extracted I'm gonna send them to another parse method just like the one we are using over here and the difference would be that this link that we started off with will be replaced with the link that we just extracted from these and I'm gonna do this to send the data of each of these links as we go to another callback function from inside and what happens in the background is that it runs this it grabs the first link for the first link it opens the next parse method that we just want to create right now and then it parses the data that we need that we're gonna code and then it goes to the next link calls the method again and extracts the data from that link once again and for requesting a new page we're gonna first define that method so we're gonna go down we're gonna go before we indent 
and I'm going to call this parse inner, maybe parse inner page something like that uh, the rest stays the same we pass self which is the current object of the class we need to pass that scrappy needs it in the background and also we need the response that the callback url will get that response for us after we call this method and in here i'm just gonna write print response.txt just like the way we did up there but right now for the inner pages and the way i'm going to request this we can simply go to the tutorial and copy for what we actually deleted from here scrappy.request url and our callback function and remember instead of return we need to use yield over here and for those of you who don't know Yield is very useful when we are dealing with callback functions in these types of scripts because after the yield is done, it doesn't close and you know get rid of the variables and the data that we have in the current method. It keeps them going so when the callback function is finished, it goes up again, goes to the next link and runs this method down below once again. And with a return, this won't happen and the function or the method will be completely done. So definitely we need to use yield and scrappy.request. We need to pass the URL, but the URL variable is not URL right now. It's add as we are looping through it right here and we verified that the link is right here. And for the callback function, it's not called parse right now. It's called parse inner page. So I'm going to copy parse inner page and we need to type self.parse inner page, which, uh, which basically specifies the current class and then the inner page. So we're going to request it like that. And then we're going to dump the request text once again to see if we get the response page from the detailed page. I'm going to run the crawler again and we have an error we need to see what's happening guys i'm gonna make this as natural as possible i'm not gonna edit i'm not gonna do anything else if we hit an error we solve it together because i'm also gonna show you how to think like a programmer and how to google your way through fixing things and writing things or even learning new stuff so definitely you're not gonna see a cut here we're gonna see what happens request URL must be a string that is interesting because it in here we can see that they look like a string but they might not be actually they might be inside an array or something like that so what we want to see is I think we need to get over here yeah I remember this was an object and we forgot to put get here it's easy to forget so that's why I'm specifying that is an object all the time yes it works now I stopped it because it's lightning fast and we don't want to be rude to the server we just need to you know stop the execution once we get the result that we want since the server has its own limitations we don't want to put loads on websites uh, we just need to be gentle with these websites that we crawl and experiment and we see that we have some sources of the pages it's a little bit uh, dirty but we can definitely verify that our data is here and this is a JS script from the page which is totally what we need to look at you can see the broker information right here and that also verifies that we're in the page and also we can see the elements of this page as we go upper and forgive me if I'm scrolling too fast I'm just stopping on an interesting data so we can all look together yes this is an interesting data we can see the address we can see the price we can see the meter the number of rooms that means we're inside the page and we have everything that we need right here so now we don't have to do anything else with this script just yet but before we close this down and only focus on the detailed page I'm gonna show you how to follow 
the pagination of this page because this is a small area with not a lot of houses for sale right now but if I run this this is a complete county and you can hit 1834 houses for sale and if we go to the bottom of the page right now really fast we can see that we have 37 pages each with all these advertisements filled so we want to make our script that doesn't end after it gets this last advertisement but to follow the next page and the next page until it cannot find any other pages and that's what we're gonna do now and then we go to extract the information that we want from the detail page to do that after this add iteration and loop is over we need to check for another element in the page just like we're doing this and that element would be our page number so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go after this loop keep the indentations neat so you don't get any errors and here I'm gonna write response.css once again and inside this response.css we need our selector to get the pages and the link to the next page so I'm gonna go and click on one of these in the inspect element and we can see that there is a div for this whole thing and the div is called navigation if we go higher we can see these tools we can see this container and this is basically the link to the second page and this is the link that we need to extract to get that next page going on we also can take a look at this nesta which means next in swedish yeah this is actually much better we can keep looking for this next page and get the link as long as we have it and once we're in the 37th page we don't have this button anymore so our script won't follow and the job will be done and as you can see it's much easier since we have a class called next page and if we search the next page over here we can see that we only have one so that's really easy job to extract this and follow it as the next page uh, we just need to go to the div and since we only have one next page class we can directly say a with the next page class and see what happens it most definitely works I'm gonna comment this out and I'm gonna write a dot next page over here and I'm gonna get the value from that and I'm gonna print the result and remember we right now we have the object of the next page we need the href inside that which is our link so just like the way we did up here we say this double columns we write ATTR we write two single columns and what we pass to this ATTR method will be the href which is our link we go to the terminal once again we're on the whole thing and we will see right here that we have a non value and that means that we didn't find it yet but we're gonna find it 2000 years later well so the reason for this non value over here that we had is that we forgot to put the new link over here and we were looking at the previous link which only had one page and that page didn't have a next button so that makes sense that we get a non value over here so I'm gonna replace this with the new link just to verify the next page function that we are implementing is working and as you can see we are able to see the page because the page exists right now and right now we just need to follow this page uh, I'm gonna copy this piece of code that I wrote the selector and I'm gonna put it in a variable called next page and in here we want to check if the next page is not none and this check basically 
avoids the issue that we had if the advertisement has only one page or the page is the last page and we don't have any next page and we basically crowd every page we don't get into this follow but if it's not none that means we have a next page and we use something to follow that link to the next page and what we need to realize over here is that this link is not a full link it's a relative link from the website name so we have two choices to follow it one is the thing that I'm doing here with the follow function which scrappy under the hood takes care of concatenating this website name to the link we have and then follows it or we can basically manually grab the URL concatenate it with this link and then use a simple request just like the one we used here to follow it but it's much easier to do a response follow and then we're going to pass a next page which is our relative link to the page and inside the scrappy it will be a full link and we need to pass the function that it needs to use as a callback function to call it again we need to call this parse once again for the next page so what happens over here if I uncomment it will be that we go inside here we get the data that we need for all these advertisements and then we follow the next page and then we do the same process all over again until there is no page left and our crawler job is basically done so right now we can focus on the detail page and get the data that we want from that I'm not gonna change this link we need to keep that because we have next page to test but I'm gonna stop the crawler as soon as I hit a result so that we don't request it too much I will run it once again and we will see that we have data just like before and that's fine so this print we keep it over here and we navigate to this page the first interesting uh, data for each of these advertisements is the address and I'm gonna inspect the address over here to see what it contains and as we can see we have a property address street just like we're looking at all these classes to find something unique and we should be able to navigate from this content parent to this content child which is the street name and hopefully that's a unique one but we can check that just now that's a only one match so what we need to do is we only gonna look for a h1 in this page with this class and we should be able to get this data and move on to the next we're gonna do this part a little bit fast and I'm not gonna go through all of them because it's a lot but make sure to stay until the end of the video because I have a challenge for you guys with the github repository of this code and we're gonna do some challenge together also I have an Easter egg in the code that I like you guys to find so make sure to follow until the end in here we use the same good old selector that we had the CSS selector and inside here we're gonna say we need an h1 with this class and I'm gonna get the value from it because we have the object and I'm gonna pass it over here instead of that and now we should be able to see the full address over here I'm gonna stop it right there and yes we have the address but it's the full link we need to get the data inside this h1 tag because we don't want all these tags in our database or the file that we're saving it and for that reason we just need to specify in here if I'm not mistaken it's the text but we can check alright that is the text and we see all these addresses from all these links that we just gave it to them all these advertisements and as you can see it's pretty fast so make sure when you're running it on a real website you put some waiting in your code so it waits it doesn't bombard them with the request because it's harmful for their server most probably also they might ban you from their website ban your IP because you're exceeding the amount of requests so right now that we have this data I'm gonna put it inside a variable called street name or address 
doesn't matter i'm gonna have it over here and we go hunt down the next thing that we want which is the price which is probably one of the most interesting ones over here and we see that we have a unique class over here hopefully and yes we do this is the container it's just a prefix but we have the actual class name as unique and it's inside a p so we're going to repeat the same step over here. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to replace this with the price. This is a P tag. We replace it with the class and we should be able to see this value, but we need to verify everything. I'm going to run it again. Yes. As soon as we see some data, we stop and we see the values of all those houses over here but you see that we have a space in here and we have a kr for swedish crone and uh, that we probably don't want to keep in our database so we need to do some filtering for this address and for that we can simply use python's replace in our current scenario and i'm gonna do price equals price that replace and inside here first i'm going to get rid of crone with a replace it with an empty string i'm going to run it once again to see if that's gone and as we can see that is gone and also we have a character that in html is an nbsp and for those of you who do web development you know that this is a space but in the Unicode character, the one that we have in our terminal, in our, uh, in our response, that is not a normal space. So we cannot just replace it with a normal space just like this. This wouldn't work because it's a different character. What we need to do is to replace the NBSP by having the Unicode character of that. So I'm going to put a U over here. And we're going to say on Google, replace NBSP Python. That's right. We should be able to get the Unicode character of this. Uh, just like that. Yeah, this is the one that we look for. We already put the U there. We just need this thing uh, that Basically, this represents the NBSP in the Unicode, and now we're replacing it. We run it once again. Yes, we can see that the prices are much cleaner right now, and this is perfect for having it on a file, we're saving it on a database, and we want to keep it like that. Next thing we want to look for, I'm going to close these two tabs. And we're gonna go for the next one. What we should get? Should we get all these data? We can get all these data. Let's get them. We actually can do something interesting with this. Since this is all inside this property attributes, as we can see over here, and each of them are inside this divs with this rows and the tables, we can basically extract each label and each value and we can put them into a python dictionary and that is much better and easier than going through all of them with a row which is not probably the best idea so what i'm gonna do right now is that i'm gonna go parent to child until i reach uh, these dl's that basically contain all these information and inside them we have the divs with the label and the value and hopefully we can get our data from them i'm going to copy this we need a four over here because we need to go through those divs and i'm going to call these uh attr attrs makes sense and inside here we're going to do a response.css again and inside the response.css first thing we do is we go to the parent, we do a greater sign again, we go inside the first one. These are all unique classes and since we found the first unique classes from now on we're dealing with the children of that and in this child 
uh, this div is most probably unique so we can easily go to from here to the next one paste that here and I'm gonna put this print in there let's see what we have until now let's go step by step so it won't get confusing and I do a get I run the crawler once again oops wrong syntax we forgot the column we do it once again we stop it yes we have all these data that we need and as you can see there are label values all over the place we can just put this labels as a key to that dictionary and the values as a value to that dictionary and collect them all at once but we need to go a little bit further to this DL and this DL and get the values inside these DLs over here and we realize that we also have a property attribute row in each of them that we don't have for all these nonsense data that we don't need so perhaps we can we can instead of this DL we can probably go directly for this div and grab the label and value from that let's try that and see if it works we're on this once again to see what happens now I think we need to go from this DL unfortunately but it's also possible to use that DL dot use the class over here and it's a bit long but you guys get the idea right from the div we go to the next div then we go to the DL and then inside that DL we look for the div and let's see if we have the value yes right now it works so what we need to do right now is to extract the labels and extract the values for each of them and put them in a Python dictionary as we talked about uh, in this step we're gonna go here and this ATTRs that we have we're gonna do another selector over there and in that selector we're gonna look for the label first so we have a div dot label and we need the oh it's a DT sorry the div will be a DT with this class and we need the text inside that let's first verify if we get the labels right then we do the values with the same approach yes we have all sorts of labels over here which is awesome next thing we should do is do the same thing for the values I'm gonna put this in the ATTR label and go here and pick this class this is a DD with this class so instead of DT we do DD as a tag then the class as we copied from there and then we have the text we should be able to see the values right now that's right I'm gonna stop yes we have the values uh, they are a bit dirty but we are going to use the same replace uh, functionality to make them a bit cleaner before we put them in there so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put this into a ATTR value variable I'm gonna get rid of this print basically we're gonna filter them a little bit to make them look a bit nicer first what I like to do here to prevent errors is to check them with an if that if this attribute label is not none and if this is not none is if it's not empty I'm gonna get the label and first I'm gonna do a replace on that label uh, in Python we say the variable that replace 
and I'm gonna get rid of every single backslash n which means a new line each inter that you know you hit return and it goes to the next line this is the character for that sorry for the semicolon other programming languages force of habit I'm gonna do the same thing with the tab this is the character for the tab and also I'm going to trim this so the spaces from both sides go away and the way that we trim it in Python I need to search trim in Python basically we want to get rid of the left and right white spaces strip it's called yeah so we're gonna say attribute label the strip the parentheses and let's check how this looks like now and we can do the same thing for the characters right there it's good that we clean up the data that we're crawling just just the time that we're crawling it uh, because it's it's a bit tough to do it after we put it in a file we have an error oops we forgot to do these we replace them with empty strings uh, that's what we should specify and also this thing we need to put it in a variable that's right and we can see that the data is actually clean and it looks good now we need to do the same thing for the values. The values were a little bit more dirty, so I think that they need this more than the labels. So I'm going to copy the same thing. Maybe we need to add some stuff to them. Maybe we don't, but it's good to do some reusability. And I'm going to get all these attribute labels and replace them with attribute attr value right now we're doing the same thing as above to the values and we need to print the value as well let's see how it looks like now okay we see that we don't have those ugly wrapping spaces right now which is much better than that but what we also can do is to get rid of all these you know data that we have connected to these numbers and we need to replace them. I'm going to replace them. First let's go with the chrome per square meter and then we can go with the chrome per year, chrome for month and now we should get rid of those easily. We also have some normal square meters over here that we probably want to get rid of as well. So I'm just going to copy this from here. And this might make this look much better. Let's test and verify. Yep, uh, those characters are gone which is a good news for us right now. We can also get rid of the space be between these. These space is also one of these type of characters what we can also do is we can copy we actually can do this for both of them the nbsb space uh, that special character needs to go for all the data that we have so i add this for both of this data and i'm going to run it again yeah there we go the data is actually much better and much cleaner right now and we want to keep it that way this is a normal space and we want this otherwise we need to replace the whole space room but depending on what you need you can filter them just the way that i do so the data is much cleaner now we just need to put them into a dictionary a python dictionary right now i'm gonna call my dictionary attr data perhaps I'm going to create an empty python dictionary let's just let's just put label here as a key and let's put the attr value as the value and after right after this we're gonna print the whole attr data 
just to see how it looks after this operation is done we should be able to see uh, some clean data hopefully yeah see the type is an apartment all this data the room i'm not sure about this none thing we can probably get rid of it let's do something let's uh let's add another if over here for attribute uh, label so if attribute label is none attr label yeah this this should get rid of that nonsense none last thing that we had oh damn is not none <laughs> because we don't want to only store the none ones uh, it's crazy we only store the ones that we have data there we go this looks much better much cleaner and we have a lot of data now basically until now we get the advertisements the links the detail pages and we follow the pagination as well yeah we crawl some data we crawl the address we crawl the price we crawl the attributes we can do the same thing with the description as well but this tutorial I don't want to make it complicated and long but make sure to stay until the end of the video because I have a challenge and an easter egg for you guys I would like you guys to follow and with that you will learn much better and also in a github repository that I'm gonna put in the description I make this code more complete and put it there and the challenge is a little bit about that github repository anyway uh, let's stop with crawling the data and let's focus on storing it right now the way I would like to store it is I would like to add each of these data in each operation into a Python dictionary again and I would like to register an event in our Scrappy that if the spider job is done, we open a method, another method that I'm gonna put, and after the spider job is done, that method get executed, and I would like to dump the whole data of our dictionary that we collect eventually into a JSON file that I can parse later for a database or whatever I need after I got that so let's do that and get the final result as the json file that we are looking for what i want to search right now is how to put a spider closed event so i will say spider closed event scrappy let's let's see what what comes up let's take a look all function with spider quits that's exactly what we need and I also edited this answer before because this solution right here is actually for a previous version it doesn't work on a new version so I changed it to this new repository that we have and they accepted my edit anyways let's get this going this is deprecated instead we're gonna use this uh, I'm gonna import pi dispatcher up here the dispatcher is an event that we want to listen and we also need to register this dispatcher in the beginning of our spider before our methods i'm going to put it right here and when the signal spider closed came in which means the spider job is done we're gonna execute the spider closed method and i would like to put it down here i would like to get rid of this also we need to collect our data so i will come here in the class we need a dictionary for results and this dictionary at the beginning when this class is initiated it's empty but after that we fill in value to this and at the end when the spider is closed we just dump that into a json file we can handle it in another ways as well but this is how i'm going to do it now you guys let me know if you have better solutions also right now we do need an iterator i know this is not probably the perfect thing to do but i'm gonna do it like a counter uh, it's a pain to add things into python dictionaries you cannot uh, increment it basically 
So what I do is I add an incrementer over here that we're going to use to put things into result later on. But if you guys have better solutions, let me know. We can also use uh, the items.py in this scrappy, but I'm not going to go through that right now. We can use those items and don't do this dump spider close thing and just let the scrappy handle the data collection and saves it for us. And also you guys can look at it. Export data scrappy. I'm going to put this link into the description as well. We have this item exporter that we didn't talk about. We can use these as well. And we can export it as XML, JSON, CSV, whatever we need. I'm going to put this link in the description and also add this to the challenge that we're going to talk about in the end. But let's finish this thing. Let's do it quick. The counter we have, the results we have it. And after we get all these data, we just need to specify self.result and the self.counter of that we're gonna add data like this another dictionary inside the dictionary and what we need to say is we say the address or straight name let's name it straight name i'm gonna put this variable up there straight name i'm gonna repeat the same thing for all these prices uh, ATTRs I'm gonna call it I'm gonna get rid of this and we already have this inside the dictionary so I'm just gonna put it here so it will be a st string name string the price string and ATTR is gonna be another dictionary that is label value label value and we can extract that while we parse our JSON and we want to put it in a database or do whatever we want to do later we actually incremented this speaking of increments after we do this we need to increment the value of this self counter so I will say self counter equals self counter plus when now we need to dump this into a JSON file we need to import JSON import JSON you see guys I'm not trying to just teach you how to do this I myself I search a lot I forget a lot about the, the things that I'm doing you don't have to remember the syntax you don't have to know everything by heart you can just google your weight through the what you want to do and you learn a lot of things in this journey during this process I learned a lot of things as well just when I was adding this video and this is actually something we need to do when we are programming we just need to start code and google our way and we don't even have to know everything we just search how to dump it into JSON how to replace it how to do a strip and this will make our job much easier okay so imported JSON we open the results.json file that's what I'm gonna write name it we're writing into it that's why we're saying this and the selector for this file will be FP and what we want to dump inside that is a dictionary but it's not this dictionary but it's our dictionary so we have things ready now but remember this link has thousands of advertisements and I don't want to wait that long for this exporter to work so I'm gonna go back and search for a smaller area just like the one we went through the first time this uh, Fulun that we're gonna search we only have 38 which makes it perfect and we put it here also what I would like to say before we wrap this up before doing these requests please do a waiting time like two seconds three seconds don't bombard the website with requests their server might be sensible or you just might get banned from the website for no reason just be gentle to the server collect the data and yeah experiment with it so I'm gonna import time and before our requests I'm gonna do that the first request doesn't matter it's only once the next request is really important we're doing this all over the place so please sleep for two seconds for me over here and th 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 this is good as well when we follow the pages let's put one here as well we can do this one second since we don't do this that much and yeah this makes our script slower but doesn't torture the server and doesn't get you banned 
from handling things. So we dumped it. Let's run it. I'm gonna clean the terminal. Hopefully everything will work. No, it's not working. Because we forgot to put from over here. From the Pi dispatch, import the dispatcher. This is inside that. We're gonna run it once again and we don't have the signals. We need signals. Uh, spider closed again. Scrappy. Let's take a look at that stack overflow thread again. I wish I hadn't closed it, but I did. Yeah, yeah. We also need signals over here. From Scrappy, we import signal. This one uh, works now. The other one is deprecated. This one should be fine. We put this here, up there. We run it. Hopefully no errors again. We have the two second wait right now and with that it's gonna take a little bit of more time. A few moments later. Yeah, looks like the spider is closed. Let's look at it. Let's look if we have the file. I'm gonna go here and we should have a file right now. Yeah, results.json. We have a JSON file, boys and girls. We just go here, uh, JSON Beautifier, we need to see what's going on. So I'm going to put this here, process, this is a valid JSON, and I'm going to make this full screen. We can see that the 0, 1, 2, each of them are ads, and inside that ad we have a street name, the street name is there. We have the price in the street name, yeah I know what, why is that, I'm going to show it to you. But we also have the attributes. Uh, as you can see, we still have some garbage data that we want to clean up. I'm, I'll make sure that I'll do that in the GitHub repository that I need you guys for the challenge. These two, we need to make these clean. And for this price thingy, we have this that we forgot to change. Street name is still in price, so no wonder. We need to put price inside the price and everything else should be fine. That's right, so let's get to our home, our safe house, and I wanna show you the challenge right now, the challenge that we are going to have. So I decided to have challenge and Easter egg for these coding episodes. The challenge would be, uh, I'm gonna complete this and put it in a GitHub. It will be a public repository. The link will be down in the description and the challenge is just go to the website that I just crawled, the ads, and do something with these pictures. It's going to be interesting. You guys will have a fun time. Try to download this image, put it in a directory, and name it in a way that in your results array, in your final JSON file, uh, you can have this image. Yeah, this image grab it, download it, put a name of the image to the JSON file so it's accessible when we are importing the data later on. This is the challenge. You guys have one week to complete it and you guys can DM me on Instagram. Find me at the Dave Vacom as ID and DM me and tell me that you completed a challenge and we're gonna have a chat together. Also, we have an Easter egg. You will realize that when I upload this code, there will be a decoder alongside the spider. Just take a look at this file and let me know in the comment sections or DM me on Instagram, whatever you wanna do. Let me know what that does because that's an interesting one. I realize that we need to do that sometimes and that decoder is an interesting thing to look at. So that is the Easter egg, that is the challenge. Yeah, I'm gonna clean it a little bit, complete it and put it in the GitHub. And the link will be in the description down below. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, this was a long one, but hope you guys got value from it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like the video. Let me know what you think. If you have feedbacks, I will be more than happy to know them down in the comment section. Also, follow me on Instagram, the dev they come, just straight up without dots and anything. And we have a good chat there together. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.